And three, two, one. Yippee ki yay, mother. Welcome to the party, pal. I started with the base. Started? Started. I cut it a little roomy for the free movement. The fabric is comfortable for sensitive skin. And can also withstand the temperature of over 1,000 degrees. Welcome to another edition, a special Indian Cinemaniac edition of Yippee Kaye Mother Podcast. What is going on, Mother Podcasters? Hello there. Yo, greetings. Yo, yo. Uh, greetings. Everybody have a good week. Chris had a uh, hangover style uh, week in New Orleans. Then he saw the... <laughs> Eclipse in Erie, PA. The totality, yes. You've had, you've had quite a couple of weeks. Wow. I've had a busy, yeah. I and, how, and you squeezed in this movie or had you seen it before? I had seen it before, but um, we were actually in Erie for a few days. And luckily, uh, with most um, Airbnbs, it seems like they have a Roku TV. And plenty of people are nice enough. They sign up with their accounts and they always forget to delete them before they leave. <laughs> That's so, unbelievable. Some folks will have some odd things on their uh, on their currently or continue watching list, but no. Were you with the whole family? The weekend. What'd you say? Were you with the whole family? Yes, yes. Did yeah. the kids have the kids seen The Incredibles before? Uh, no, I don't. Actually, yes, they've they've both seen The Incredibles. Um, they uh, they didn't watch it. I I watched it after I put them to bed because um, it was just too much. Well, there's some randy were... stuff going on in that in that film. I, it is I, PG. I, yeah, it's very randy. It and he was right. up there so, for the totality. So you know yes, this mean. is an American film. But John, explain what we're doing now. What's the new series we're doing under the so, Yippie Kai umbrella? Right. So what umbrella. what we're trying to do? We get we get a lot of uh, Indian people watching our Indian Cinemaniac and commenting watch, where we watch Indian films and liking. And it really does not transfer over to the other show where we do Western movies. Uh, uh, Hollywood, oh, Hollywood movies, yeah. Yeah. Hollywood. Hollywood. Well, whatever. South um, Korean. So, so we reached out to them in a community poll, and we asked if 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 you if you could recommend for us an American film or a non-Indian film because it could be it could be a foreign film anyway that you want us to review. And we had a list, and we whittled the wit list down. We each picked a movie that we wanted to do, and we put it on the wheel. And this was the first one that got chosen, and it happens to be the one I picked. And it is the I Incredibles. Imagine. Okay, Pixar's Incredibles. All right, so we'll do we'll do this film, then we'll do a round of what you watch, and then we're going to spin for the next. We have four left on the wheel right now at this moment. We may we may do more if we get some engagement. Yeah. I mean, this is all about trying to get engagement to this this channel, Yippee Kaye Mother Podcast. Expand our reach. We're hoping we're hoping this does something. Although the one person who recommended this might be the only person watching this one. <laughs> so, but. But they will comment if they watch it, so that'll be good. True. As long and, as we and, get at least five likes on these episodes. And next week we are doing 12 minimally. fail, which is... <laughs> well, that Indian is for the Indian film. Cinemania. That's right. That's right. Our, so, our, so Hey, we should, because I always like it with Debbie's account, too. Nice. Well, nice. It's about time. So that would mean we get six of us, right? Six nice. likes, yeah. supposedly, minimally, hopefully. All right, so, John, nice. go ahead. Uh, this film came out in 2004. What is this? Is this a movie? It. It's a what? cartoon. It's or is an, it an animated, animated feature? Film. Oh, this. Uh, okay, I have to tell you, I, I was thrilled that somebody picked this movie because out of all the Pixar films, this is my favorite Pixar film. And obviously, I'm a superhero genre guy. Are you, so this is your favorite, this one. The favorite, know, my you favorite. Just said Pixar. That. You just said that. <laughs> yeah. Really, over Toy Story. Yes. Wow. Only okay. because I've I've got a I've got much more affinity for this genre. I love Toy Story. Don't get me wrong. But this was just different than than all those other movies. It was the first PG one. It was it was done from a human's perspective, which was the first time Pixar did that. Um, it was well written. the The voice cast was fantastic. The visuals, that 1950 retro look, is spectacular. And actually, my favorite part was the music. The music is phenomenal, and it was the only. It was the first Pixar movie not to be nominated for an Oscar for music. The score, <coughs> the score has a Henry Mancini, John Barry vibe. You definitely hear uh, James Bond. You definitely hear Henry Mancini. And obviously, uh, the time frame is the, like in uh, you know the Flint movies, the the Matt Helm 
in the James who Bond. Who scored movie. it? Is there any particular? Person I don't know who the. I, it's you know, Michael I, Giacchino. It's okay, one of his best you. scores, and he's done a lot of great. It music. is. It's fantastic. The music throughout the film, but so so basically, for um, uh, it came out in two thousand and four. It was directed by Brad Bird. It was his first film for Pixar. They got him, I think, from Warner Brothers. And um, they said, do whatever you want. And this was something that had been gestating for a while with him. And uh, so so he he was, the, this is also uh, one of the only Pixar movies that has a sole writer for the credit. Usually it's a big group of writers. Brad Bird wrote this. This is his film. And it's the story of a superhero family who, at the beginning of the film, and I love, and, and this is what I, you know, the opening scene where he's being recorded and it's grainy and they- Like a TV, the, like he's on TV. Like the TV, but the detail with the microphone and just the dialogue, it, 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 it was a very, um, even though it's a very stylized film, it had a lot of heart to it, a lot of um, real things, uh, real emotion. But but he, 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 at the start of the movie, he's a big hero, and and now uh, he saves somebody he, in some he, great who's scenes. The, who's he? Uh, uh, Mr. Incredible, okay. Bob Parr. Okay. Um, don't just say his secret me. identity, John. I know. Jesus. I just gave it away, didn't I? Because that little mask usually covers it up. Oh but God. he saves somebody, and he ends up getting sued. And now the superheroes are all getting sued. The supers, as they're called in this film. So it's it's the aftermath of that where he re, where he relocates the entire family, and now he you know he's pathetic. Because now he, him and Frozone, played by Samuel L. Jackson. Again, I, I, sh I shouldn't dismiss this. Craig T. Nelson plays Mr. Incredible. Holly Hunter plays Elastigirl. Um, Samuel L. Jackson plays Frozone. Um, um, as Jason Lee plays uh, the Syndrome. Uh, Syndrome, who was not the original villain. He was only in the beginning scenes, but they loved his they loved the character, so they made it the main villain. He wasn't originally the main villain. And the reason why he got the role, Ralph, you'll appreciate this, was because of Dogma. Brad Bird loved him in Dogma. That's why he ended up as the villain in this. Also, Elizabeth Pena and and the best one of the best characters, Brad Bird plays Edna Moe. I had no idea that was him. The, well, so what yeah. happened was they Edna wanted... Edna steals the movie. They wanted Lily Tomlin. Yeah, she mm -hmm. would have been good. So... Brad Bird did, uh, Ralph, you know what this is, the track, what do you call it? A temp track. Brad Bird did the temp track, played it for Lily Tomlin. Lily Tomlin said, you don't need me. You're perfect for this. Mm. And that's how he ended up with the role. And it's obviously a takeoff of Edith Head, who has won all kinds of Oscars for The Sting, for uh, The Ten Commandments. A brilliant, you know, world famous uh, costume designer for Hollywood movies. That's who really it was based on. Um, but but it, for me, this film, you know, there hasn't been a good the 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 uh, the comic book character that started Marvel was the the uh, team of the Fantastic Four that started Marvel's big um, build up, right? You mean as a, originally as comics? As a comic, yes. So they are the, the that thing was the put a team together and. There hasn't been a good Fantastic Four movie. This film is like the best Fantastic Four movie. Because if you look at, you know, the characters are basically the same a little bit. You know, they've each got a, a distinct power. But the dynamic of the family is the thing I about I mean, the powers movie. are almost the same as, as the Fantastic Well, almost, Four. almost, right? You got the rubber Jack arms, Jack's right? The, Jack Jack's, Jack's, Jack's the only one. one. He can run fast. Well, he but... can turn on fire, though. Oh, that's the little Which, guy. Yeah, he yeah, Dash, 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 Dash is the one. Yeah. Dash. Dash is the, the, the speed girl, guy. The daughter has the, the invisible girl, right. right? And and Par is actually the thing, right? That's, that's who he really is. Yeah. But but the the dynamic with the whole family, and this isn't like a kiddie movie. I mean, there are consequences to see to things that happen in this movie, like that scene when they're in the plane and the missiles are coming coming at them, and her concern about the kids, and you hear it in her voice, and. And uh, Mr. Incredible is, is you know, captured by syndrome and he's listening to it. And when he thinks they die, I mean, there's real, you know, there, there's real depth to that. And it's a seriousness. And and there are there are bad things that happen in this movie that, that I don't think it's like a kiddie movie like some of the other ones. And, no, they were having I, sex. They kept having. Sex well, but that, that's another thing. I mean, it was very suggestive. It wasn't for, suggestive. Well, for this type of movie and and. The story's great. The, the visuals are, are inc 
<laughs> incredible. The visuals are just so good in this movie. Every single thing had a great look to it. The fabric of the clothing, the detail of this stuff. And this was relatively early CGI uh, animation because it, he wanted this to be traditional cell. And they, they went with the CGI. He wasn't too sure about it, but I think it worked beautiful. When did this? So this yeah, was back up. 2004, 2004. Okay, so Nemo came out when? Uh, Nemo, Toy I'm not sure. Okay, Toy that Story was... the year was, before, I think. Yeah, and Toy Story was what, 1994? Toy Story was 99? Well, 99. Iron Giant 95. Iron Giant was 99. Was that's Brad Bird. Yeah. I understand that's Brad yeah. Bird. Toy yeah. Story was 95, um, I think. Yeah, so so I mean, this is pretty far along in the animation. When was yeah, up? but was they weren't doing this? a lot. Up was, two, uh, up was 2008. Yeah, okay. and and also the detail of this particular CGI and there's little <laughs> things in it, like at the end when the two old guys are talking about the superheroes come back. That was Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnson, who were the original Disney nine old men, the original animators. So there's all kinds of little stuff like that. I just the, the, this movie for me. And I'm not saying Toy Story doesn't have it because it does have a lot of heart, but there's just something about this film that the, the the storytelling, the relationship of the family, how much they cared about each other, the the enthusiasm when the little kids, they you know, when she tells him, run, I want you to run, and how excited he is about using his speed, and then the wrap-up at the end. I just love this movie. Um, like I said, it's my favorite Pixar film. And when I saw it on the list, I was thrilled because I've watched this a lot. And it, uh, uh, the sequel wasn't nearly as good as this. I don't think anyway. But each character was distinct. Each character was memorable. Uh, and I'm dying to know. I think everybody's seen this other than Ralph, right? I hadn't seen it. Yeah, but everyone else had seen it, right? I think so. Yes. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So I'm dying to know what Ralph thinks because I, 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 I'm, not, I know you're not a huge superhero genre fan. But uh, or animated feature. Film. Well, yeah. I mean, he well, loves Toy Story, though. He loved Toy I Story. Loved I loved Toy that. Story. I loved. I cried during Iron Giant. I well, just, Iron Giant. Yeah, I mean, that's an ex too bad. Iron Giant. Yeah, they I, marketed I just, that completely wrong. I just found Iron Giant. Yeah, great was movie. Incredible. Now, yeah. I had kids. You know, my kids were young enough to go see The Incredibles. For some reason, I never saw it with them. I did go see Car, the Car one, Cars. Cars. I don't know when that came out. Lightning McQueen thing. Yeah. Saw that with them. I like that. But, you know, like Sean just said, and I'm not a big animated guy. Now, having said that, after seeing this now, I couldn't figure out what all the hubbub was about. Except that uh, the superhero part of it, because I don't think at that point Iron Man hadn't come out yet. So that resurgence hadn't happened, right? The fact mm -hmm. that superheroes. Well, the big superhero movie was Spider-Man two years before. Okay. Those so, movies so, were okay. giant So hits. that was, so, yeah. So The beginning of that dominating pop culture and, and, for the next 20 years. And I don't know why my kids and I didn't see this, but I had never seen it. But seeing it now with my eyes now, I just I just couldn't figure out what all the hubbub was about. I liked it. You're right. The the interplay with the family is fun. That's the fight, the fighting, the two the two kids sibling rivalry that was going on was great. Um, but just I I didn't I wasn't all charged up by it at all. And frankly, it's kind of woke. I mean, it starts with the woman talking her the, the mother talking about how the females are going to save the world. So that's early, 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 early wokeness, and nobody ever complained. And about it's it, not like this movie Pixar wasn't woke. woke. Now, this movie was not woke. I'm just at saying. All. I mean, if you looked at it now, you might say it's woke because she she was like the powerful no. one in that relationship. She was great, and and the voice acting is fantastic. Look, that scene you're talking about at the beginning, like the TV thing they were faking, was great because it seems so natural, and it just you know it's something you're used to seeing, um, right? And and it worked. I just didn't. I wasn't charged up by it at all. And um, I had to ask, you know, I go to work and I ask people that are in their 30s, 35, 36, you know, what did this movie mean to you? And they were raving like you guys are going to rave about it. They were doing the same thing. They just said this thing is the one that, you know, I loved. And, and part of it must, must be comic book stuff, um, superhero. I just, it, for me, it just didn't, it, it fell flat. Now, I love Brad Bird. I know he went on to direct the Mission Impossible. I loved, loved, loved Iron Giant. Um, but um, I just. Did you like the music? Yeah, it was good. But I mean, it's like, you know, they, they always put. But see, Toy Story for me is the mountaintop for Pixar, just because of the nostalgia that that brought. And all three of those films were just, you know, and there's one that you're crying at the end of that third one. I mean, I didn't feel any of that in this one. And it's predictable. There were sky beams, all kinds of stuff going on. And, you know, the physics are all crazy, but it's a cartoon. So, you know, I kind of expect it. So I'm just it's tepid. An animated feature. I'm tepid. I would recommend it. I'm not saying I wouldn't recommend it, but it's not something that I, I just found that great. 
It's a very mature animated film. Not like to, Up. Up is rated mature. M compared to, I mean, the other ones. It definitely yeah. is. I'm going to jump in here real quick because one of the things that I, when rewatching it, that I, I guess maybe I'd forgotten, but one of the things, scenes that I really liked is when after the plane crashes, right? And it's, it's Holly Hunter talking to her daughter and basically saying, we're in real danger now and I'm going to need you to step it up, basically, which that is such works. an adult thing to say to your child, um, to basically say, I need you to do better because if you don't, we could die. Do you know what I mean? That is such like an intense thing that at the time, because when this movie came out, when I saw it, I didn't have kids, you know, and so that part of it was a little bit lost on me. So we watching it because it's been a long time since I've seen it. Um, but that part of it, kind of that adult to their child interplay. Now that my son's getting older and my daughter's getting older and I'm like, no, you guys need to do this for yourself, even if it's something as simple as getting a cup of milk. You know, I get a lot of requests at my house and I'm, I've started to like, you know, basically be like, you know, I don't, my parents used to say to me, who broke your legs, you know, <laughs> and stuff like that. And I don't go that far, but I, I mean, jokingly <laughs> say that with them sometimes. But the point is, is that like that scene actually really hit me quite hard in the sense that it was like, that's like a serious thing, you know, because it was, it definitely had that. And there's like, and I really like that one scene. And, it, and, you know, it, it, I, I love that one scene where um, Syndrome is showing him all the different versions of the robots that he's created and how, you know, certain certain guys have defeated two or three versions, but then right. they're terminated. And right. some people, you know, one version defeats two or three. So, and you're just sitting there and you're like, oh, my gosh, he's just straight up like murdering these guys like mice, like test subjects. Do you know what I mean? And it's very, um, that's that's a really, I, I like that scene. And then it, it's like, you know, you find- It that, shows the consequences too. Yeah, right. and you know, it, it is. And it's funny because it does have that that vibe a little bit because, you know, I mean, I grew up with the Super Friends on Saturday mornings and that was a very tame version of comic books. And I remember the reruns of Adam West and Burt Ward as Batman and that was very tame. Um, and it wasn't until later that I actually started reading real, like, real comic books that you know they they did you know people started dying and there was there was more consequences and i felt that that was a really kind of a step up i know what john's talking about why it's pg and why it's a little bit more it's definitely more mature because i mean they're basically saying hey you know what in this case you know syndrome i mean at least from that sequence there's like 20 people you know? i mean yeah. like, i can see if you're a child if you're a child watching that you would mm -hmm. feel the danger but as an yeah. adult did you expect any of the family to die, including him? No, no, no. I didn't. So as a, as a kid, as a child watching that and that scene, John's right. The scene where the missiles are coming, it's Holly Hunter's acting in right. that scene yeah. right. that makes that but, threat sound real the, in her voice. She, she exactly. Her voice. But again, I never, ever, I knew that little Jack was going to end up doing something, some powerful thing. Because yeah. I'm an adult and I know what's going to happen. You know, they're not going to die. There's no stakes. He gets knocked gonna... around pretty good. Oh, okay. Okay. But you know, but at the same time, I mean, time, the physics of this film, you can't even. <laughs> but let me put it in this. Let me what, take tractor it, beam, put it in, you know, in additional Pixar terms for you, Ralph. Okay. Negative Here's energy beam. You know what? Sometimes, a, even though you know it's not going to happen, a movie that is doing well can make you think. At the end of, of, of Toy Story 3, when they're all in the trash compactor. Well, I thought they were dying. Like, he holds hands. I, I thought they were going to do it. I yeah. honestly no, thought I, did too. I was waiting for them to do it because if they had done it, it would have won Best Picture. People would have been tearing their eyes out and it would have been great. I mean, it would have been awful when I showed my children that. But you know, <laughs> Yeah, but that's you know, a genuine I mean, surprise. You're right. I mean, you know, but say, that was Toy, like, Toy Story 3 becomes a Holocaust movie was shocking. You know, it's... <laughs> <laughs> But that's but how I felt. Like, that's how I felt when Iron Giant, when the giant turns his body into the, the when he blows into himself the up. Yeah. And yeah. he does that dumb Superman. Great. He puts a thing on and he flies. That's a superhero movie that yeah. and a cartoon that I was like, okay, this one got me. I yeah. this, but this now again, I didn't see it, I didn't see it in my younger self. So I can't sure. I don't know how I would have put you know what position I would have been. But like I said, looking at it now, it's like there are no stakes. It's all and you yeah, talk about that line. Do you remember that line when she's on the beach with Violet and she says, uh, you know, this isn't like the Saturday morning cartoons. They're going to show no mercy 
Mm-hmm. If, if they, they will try to kill you. I mean, but that, did they you know, kill them? Did you think but, they were going to die? But no, you I mean, watch a Fantastic Four movie. I under, I you know they're not going to die. No, I understand Even that. with Dr. Doom. And as a child, you're going to feel that way. You're going to feel no, like I, as, I wasn't a child when well, I saw Ralph, this. Ralph, 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 Did you see Apollo 13? Yes. You knew they were going to you knew they were going to live but the yes. whole time no, that you movie still gets die. me. So I cried Why? at the end of that one too. Why you knew nothing yeah. was going to happen to him? No, uh, because it's a powerful movie made by, you know, it's it's it works. You that know what movie works. terrified me? And I rarely get scared. I could hardly keep my I could hardly look at the screen. Clute? No. <laughs> the counselor. No, it was um that movie about the guy who walks across the world trade so, Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Man yeah. on wire. Yeah. yeah. You know, and the thing is I'm a filmmaker. I know every effect they did to do that. But when he was on there and they show him doing that, I was like literally terrified. I mean, I was like sitting in my seat. Yeah, like those are, that's hard to watch. You know, it's, you know, and I know he's never more than like 10 feet off the ground. And it okay, but that, though. but that's still not a cartoon. I get it. It's fake. It's fake. I understand. Yeah. Do me but a favor, still- Ralph. Do me a what? favor, Ralph. Stop saying cartoon. Okay. okay? It's not an. It's no, annoying. Because to me, it, that's that's exactly what they are to me. They're, what's the difference between a cartoon and anime? What, Cartoons are a trademark. Cartoon what's is dismissive. Okay, good. It's dismissive. And it's working. It's working. <laughs> <laughs> I loved, again, Iron Giant and Toy Story are it for me. That's, you know, as, as they go. And they, they hit the right spot for me. And, and, Obviously, I didn't see this when it came out because I didn't. Uh, I didn't care. But again, I'm not. I, I I understand what you guys are saying. I just think you're looking at it through children's eyes. I think. Well, let me let me jump in. Mine are tinted yeah. now, so I, I have clear vision. Yeah. I can see what's first. Going on. Let first let me be cynical. You know, Please. I did a script called Super Guys with a oh local ad guy I named Bell anymore, Sean. Andy Stoller, ding, and ding, this was ding. in the '90s. It was like '96. <sighs> I sent it out to my agent, and it was much the same thing. Supers are outlawed, but then there's a menace, and they have, you know, and a couple people build a team. And it was a comedy. And I remember my agent saying, People aren't interested in a superhero spoof movie comedy. They'll never, you know, they're just not interested. Well, they, the whole setup was pretty similar to this, but this film I liked when I first saw it, you know, much like, um, last week's film all your movies really you see a second time are you about to rip this one for yourself no I, oh. I liked it even more the oh, second time okay. oh good you know i really liked it the that first was pretty time. suspenseful for a second <laughs> and um <laughs> that's the kind of stuff we get on this show that yeah, people well are missing. Played, Sean. well played and it was just i was just bowled over by the quality of the um of the images i this this movie i'm sitting here watching it and i just, just finished it up like two hours ago and i'm like man this is really good looking animation and all and you know it, it they had been doing it but you know to me this was like a pinnacle of it if i had to say that um i really when they made that animated version of beauty of the beast back in the 90s to me that was like okay this is the best animated film ever I think I did when I did my top 10 list, it may have been the top film, you know, and then, you know, Toy Story came out and I will say that Toy Story has more heart. All, all of the Toy Story films there, you know, and there's that, they have a built in sense of nostalgia to it. Cause you know, we all had that, you know, and it's so well played and everything, but um, I think this is a more fun movie and, and it is real. The voice acting is great. The music is fantastic. Every character is so well is so well designed, you know. Even like, you know, Edna steals the movie. I didn't know it was Brian Bird. Yeah. Sounded like Lilia Tomlin. You know, I mean, like, like all the characters are are so well defined. It, it's really beautifully done. And it's fun and it's thrilling, you know. And sometimes there's a little bit too much action, you know, but you know. I also didn't realize this is their only solo um, solo script thing, you know, which make you know, which probably really helped this because um, you know it, it does have a distinct vision. This yeah. film has a distinct vision, and for a while I thought that Pixar was a company that could do no wrong, you know. But the recent Pixar films are nothing special, 
you know, because, you know, we, we got our grandkids living here, even when they were, weren't, they'd still come and we watch the movies, you know, hey, can we watch this? And it'd be like, okay, but it's like, and they really like some of the new ones, like Seeing Red. What is that, a metaphor metaphor for menopause? Not menopause, Not you know, menopause. menstruation. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like, I, I didn't girls used to watch a 15 minute health film. Did they need a whole animated Pixar film for that? That was you know, for the I adults mean, in the room, not the. Yeah. But, um, oh, and that's another thing. That was also the Pixar formula, too, was to make films for adults, essentially, because they knew well, the kids. I mean, would... yeah. And there's jokes in all of them that are for the adults. Yeah. I mean, but this but was, then, a, you know, you gotta... I loved this film the second yeah. time through. I mean, I really, I was really really enjoyed it i really enjoyed the acting i really enjoyed the act the um writing you know it was and it was beautiful and the soundtrack is is fantastic yeah it is you know it you know what it didn't have a song though no but it didn't need one did it it didn't need one you know uh, so it would have made it more fit into our whole indian fame if it did though oh that's true dance, dance number. number needed a dance number yeah, dance. all right drew well, i hadn't watched this movie in a long time um i had liked it very much um i uh, kind of soured on brad bird after tomorrowland because i felt like that was him really saying what he believed about some of the issues that are discussed in this film about like who's really special and what kind of responsibility you have if you're essentially better than other people and tomorrowland is uh, very boring and um stunning design and everything yeah. like i feel like if he made a live action remake, which Disney's doing for everything they're going to get to Pixar eventually, I guess, which will make the Toy Story movie super creepy. But um, I, I feel like if it looked like Tomorrowland, that would make sense because it's that kind of aesthetic. And it's it's a little sterile, which is right. Uh, all that sort of mid-century looking stuff. I mean, the movie is, um, the movie The Incredibles is, is gorgeous. It's a lot more uh, Watchmen than I remembered. Um, it's also it's very dark, like the scene that Chris said, where it's basically Jason Lee excitedly showing him how he's a serial killer. Like that's actually really pretty dark and upsetting. Uh, but I think this is a this is a good superhero movie. Uh, I I my I liked Ghost Protocol, his Mission Impossible movie. Brad Bird did. I th I thought Ratatouille was okay with a couple of great scenes. But the Iron Giant is still my favorite movie that he did. And I think the Iron Giant and this movie have something in common, which is that and one of them is more a superhero movie, but they both kind of pay homage to the positive idea of a superhero. Because there's so many different ways you can look at a superhero and you can look at it as, you know, Randy and fascist, all these things that are much darker. Or you could say these are the best of us who save us, who help us. And that is, um, you know, what those two movies ultimately uh, result in. And the Iron Giant I saw six times in the theater because I kept wanting to go see it with people. And um I can't believe that they blew the marketing the way that they did. It's a, it's a classic. It's amazing. It's, um, you know, Vin Diesel's uh, one of his best roles. He said, even to today, he's still, that's his proudest role. And also it's the whole thing is very, you know, it's ET, it's all these other things. It's I'm a lonely boy. I have no dad. I make a friend from space or a monster or whatever. Like it's, it's all the tropes. It's all the cliches. It's all the everything. And it doesn't matter because it depends on who's doing it and who's telling the story. And so The Incredibles doesn't have a lot of stuff that was new, but it, it was done so well. I don't, like, who cares? And especially now, you know, 20 years later, and I looked it up, I think there have been 4,786,182 superhero movies since 2004. So they're kind of everywhere. And some of them are very good and some of them are crap. At this point, it's such a broad genre. It's like a Western or a noir or something. But it was it was fun to go back to it. Um, the... I keep going back to the music, like you guys have said. I love Michael Giacchino. I love his scores. He's done so many good things. He won an Oscar for Up. He was nominated for Ratatouille. He did the score to the show Lost. He did the score to JJ's um, Star Trek. and um, Oh, I didn't know that. He, yeah, he did the Star Trek movies, and he did, uh, I think, Rogue One. Like, he's done a Wally. -E, I think. He's just done all these gigantic 
movies and he's got such a distinct style and this movie is full of distinct styles mm. which that's fun i mean the design the acting the references the um the way that everything is played i don't know if they made a live action version who else they would cast as mr incredible besides john cena because he's both old enough and built like that but um <laughs> it was it was fun to visit now i will say uh that's a movie when it finished if you had told me there's a sequel coming out next week i would have been like yeah, i'm totally there it took what 14 years or yeah. something 10, for them to years, put the sequel right? 10 out years, 14? i know that i've seen the sequel i watched it during some time in covid um i remember that i thought it was i had a positive reaction to it um i don't remember anything about it yeah. like at all yeah. and that was that was kind of a weird come down you know like that which, that's the experience i kind of thought i you know we risked having with fury road because the last mad max movie was you know 30 years earlier but um i don't think that means that the sequel failed but that that's a movie they should have made a sequel you know every three pixar movies or something because Ooh. there's it's there's so much to do but on the other hand you know like you said it's a fantastic four movie so pick any Marvel movie that you like, and you, know, you could have done an incredible spin on it. And right. I, you know, I, I I like the balance of the superhero stuff and the James Bond stuff and the James Bond villain stuff and the family stuff. And I don't know, I'll follow Holly Hunter anywhere. She's amazing. She is. She was really good. By the way, a little tidbit for you guys: the city they were in was Metroville, which is a hybrid of Metropolis and Smallville, and the island was called. No man, no man is an island. No yeah. man is an island. Clever. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. You so, guys haven't even talked about Samuel L. Jackson. I did. I talked about it at the beginning. He's what, great. He was in it. And he has actual, uses actual high karate. It wasn't a fake brand that they made up. He and actually he's had a, a bottle uh, of high he's karate. A, he's he's, he's a frozen. Womanizer. He's a womanizer. He's, he's, he's not. He's is. married. He's not a yeah, womanizer. I know he's married, yeah. but he's the one looking for chicks when he's. Where's my super the suit? The good. I am your Where's my super suit? Right. So, you know, African American, the womanizer. Wait, I don't know. I think he was not a woman. Woman. It was anti woke and woke at the same time this film. It was not <laughs> Rob. Oh, I'm God. just this saying. Movie was I, not thought, I thought he if was, it was kind woke, of, I would kind admit of boring. It. You what? And his character. I thought his character was kind of boring. I think he's, of all the characters in the movie, he's the one that most serves a purpose in the journey of Bob Parr and Mr. Incredible, as opposed to being a real character. It's not like Samuel L. Jackson's fault or anything. I just feel like. I don't know. He just seems boring. Maybe it's his. Well, he wanted him. Brad Bird wanted him because he wanted someone with a cool voice for that character. No, and then I, I don't who get doesn't want Samuel that, L. But... Jackson in their film? Yeah. I mean, he. Yeah. You know, but uh, he and, saved. And guys, he saved. Can I Dad. say something about something about Jason Lee? Was he in a movie you wrote? Yeah, uh, he agreed to be Son in my first me. film, Twenty One Eyes, but there was a scheduling conflict. <laughs> That's okay. I have a copy. <laughs> yeah. And they also. Uh, 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 That's Bob... really what you were going to say. Yeah. Oh, uh, Mr. Incredible. Also, I'm sorry. He now. wanted to be in you're the movie. You're out of movie. you're out of focus, say? Sean. Since you've been, you know, uh, once you open that plugging. refrigerator, your your focus um, get all messed up. And when he, when uh, when the kid, uh, Incredit kid or whatever his name was, gets into the car at the beginning, he calls him. What's your name, Brody? No, bro, because Brody was from Mallrats. He played uh, his character name was Brody oh, in the movie Mallrats. So Incredible. Boy. So many. Wow. Incredible. So boy, that's right. Incredible. It is, it is kind of funny so to think many that Easter anybody eggs. would watch a Kevin Smith movie and think that acting is incredible. I must cast that person because those <laughs> movies are not about. Well, that he was good all. in Dogma. He was good in Dogma. Well, Affleck was Jason. the bomb in Phantoms too. But yeah, you know, he was. You know where Jason <laughs> Lee was good and why we wanted him for our Thanks. movie was almost what was that almost famous no he's he's quite good i liked him in my name is earl and, and other stuff but there's there's nobody in those early kevin and Smith now he, films uh, that you go this is like this is amazing acting. now he runs a camera store he he's does a, he's a big photographer yeah jason lee and oh really skate, is it a spike too. camera store well he was a, i mean he was a big skateboarder yeah, he before he became an actor. First, yeah um yeah. what was i gonna ask uh i forget now that's, that's the thing. If I don't remember it right away, if I don't get it out, it gets it's it's gone. But oh, I know what it was. The animation. You you're raving about the animation. I get yeah. the textures and all that, but the people looked weird. Okay, with the big fat ears, and I understand. But it was a stylized look. All for each right, character. whatever. I didn't like it. I'm just saying. Yeah, I didn't would you have Would you have liked it better if the movie was in the style of the end credits? Because that was a, a yep. like almost hand drawn looking, not, you know, style of that perhaps, era. Perhaps. And like like Archer credits that's like it just yeah. it screams james bond flint all that kind of stuff i mean he was going i, I wonder for... if it was originally ever thought of to do something like that well he, he did said he, he did he sell. said in fact 
He said that those end credits were originally what he had in mind. See, I mean, oh, well, I think that would have been cooler. I just found them over exaggerated. It's like Ratatouille. I think I've never seen that one either. But just based on what I was, well, seeing, yeah, they're not. I mean, they're not real. They're not meant to be human. But you yeah, said it's the first to. time they animated humans, though, right? I mean, no, no, people. from a human's perspective. From a human's perspective. A yeah. film from yeah, yeah. not from, I guess, like, from a mouse or a rat. Uh, let me just. My favorite scene is when. The teacher's accusing the kid of putting the thumb down. Yeah. I saw him move, and then you realize yeah. he was. That was pretty funny. That's and funny. Wallace Shawn, come on. You know, like, I understand. I understand. Yeah, he was very that's, good. But that's what I ended up doing in that's the film. That's who that was, Wallace right. Shawn. Yeah. What I was doing in the film was, I wonder who that voice is. I wonder who that voice is. And when Edna, because I, I knew about the Edna character, because that was such a big part of that movie, that I, I said to Maria, I don't know who that voice is. I'm trying to figure it out. And then we look it up, and it's Brad Bird. And I'm like, holy shit. I had no idea. But I was trying to figure out who's every who all the voices were, and I forgot I forgot it was Jason Lee as well. Yeah, but I think out of all of them, Holly Hunter just uh, nailed. Oh, she's the best. Yeah, she is the best, and she. Hey, really Craig T. Nelson, you know, the uh, of that Brad movie. Bird He's said very good. he had no one else in mind but Craig T. Nelson for that part, and yeah. I thought he was great too. But Can Holly I say Hunter brings a little about more Holly weight Hunter? to it. Yeah, oh uh, she, he read a book. She read a book you wrote. No. Oh. She has never read any of my scripts, to my knowledge. I just oh, okay. That's there. what you want to say? That's okay. awesome. Yeah. Norm, me either. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, all right. So that's the first of our Indian suggested. Indian and what a great pick! Suggested. Thank you. I, I want to thank great. them for. Rec I I really enjoyed the opportunity to watch yeah. this film again. You know, I real I really uh, enjoyed even it. on this podcast, you're gonna suck up like that too. Sean, did you? <laughs> maybe I mean, you said, did you watch it with the kids? No, they didn't. They, you know, they didn't watch. It's a hard time getting them to watch anything. It's now. too slow for them. Gotcha. No, yeah. these kids now. So, I but I, my, what we're watching will be surprising. Maybe surprising. So, Ralph. So you were talking about like the big ears and everything. So it's something I've noticed just generally. Every time, <clears throat> you know, animators, especially in this country, try to do like a photorealistic person, um, th those movies always bomb. And maybe it's because the stories are bad. But I'm thinking of. Final Fantasy, The Spirits Within. That was a movie that desperately tried and did a great job of making people look as real as possible. What about Polar Express? Well, the Polar Express is the one that, that did well, it's that whole Uncanny Valley. If it's not, it is. It, you can't, it's, it's weird. There's no easy way to do it. Because if, like, even yeah. in that Star Wars where they had Christopher, who was the plumber, whoever who had died, but they, they created his character. Christopher Lee. Christopher no, no, Lee. I'm sorry. No, Peter Cushing. Peter Cushing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and even uh Layla Leia Leia, right? They yeah. did her it all as looks well. A little weird. It's not it's never it's it just doesn't have it. It's not quite right. Yeah. So they probably over exaggerate it to get away yeah. from that. So you just don't you're not thinking about it. It's just a cartoon. Yeah, you're not kind of like I'm sorry. Well, you can, just it's make, an animated just make, film. You can you just can make a live action close. version if you want right. to get that close. You can get close. I think my favorite example of a movie that could have easily been uh, you know live action or animated the way that they did it was animated. It's very distinct without being disturbing. It's still a great movie period is uh spielberg's adventures of 1010 oh yeah that's which is I didn't see that. you know like they, they look like animated characters but it's all motion capture and it, it's it's crazy to watch an animated movie and go that's a spielberg stunt and i am blown away by it just like if harrison ford you know did it in a truck and raiders or something and it's just it's just a fun adventure but there's no part of it that makes you think uh, they're trying to, to do a photorealistic thing, like all this stuff where AI is going to replace actors and things like that. I think that's certainly, you know, down the line. But, you know, like the Uncanny Valley thing that you mentioned, I don't know how you get around that until you have whole generations of us that are just used to it, I guess. Maybe. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's, it's not working now, but it right. probably will. You just I mean, everything is going so fast. Um, yeah, if you yeah, haven't seen I mean, Adventures of Tintin, I recommend it. Now to, to do a live action, what's the point? Because like you said, you've got you've got four fantastic four films, four or five now, and they're doing another one. They're really trying to make that one work. Yeah, well, I mean, Marvel uh, Marvel now owns it. They, okay, they, but so so they got Pedro Pascal in it. I mean, yeah, they're, they're, they're adding yeah, a bunch of people. Yeah. So I mean, and you've got the boys on Amazon, which you know. That's what on that is head. one thing that would go through my mind as I was watching this, like the superhero beginning, and they go to the church. It's like. Yeah, I wonder if they're like the boys, you know. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, they're doing it now. I just don't know if it would, you know, this, I don't know. So, so you guys are all yippee ki on this one? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I am too. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying it's not a good film. It just wasn't, I didn't, you know, in my eyes now, I just didn't find it that. And that's why I had to ask my friends at work. 
you know, what was it? And he just he rattled off why it was so important. It's the superhero comic book thing. And, you know, they came off of Ratatouille and this one. And, you know, so I just didn't look, it's not guys. it's not my favorite superhero movie, but it's a it's a good superhero movie and it's a good movie. And obviously, you know, our, our audience knows this already. The My favorite superhero movie is RRR. So <laughs> well, you guys, you know, you, t- you guys take pandering to a level that I've never seen. Did you see the uh, the guy the guy do the uh, pitch for RRR the pitch meeting? No, I got to oh, see no. that. One. <laughs> you should check that. Out. It's I'll really check good. it out. It's really good. I, I always say the it. I always say those two guys that do that, but it's only one guy. I saw yeah, uh, the first is. time I ever heard I of think. RRR was the Critical Drinker, the best movie no one has seen. Yeah. I saw his review of it before yeah, we saw, watched. Yeah, but it. when you when you watch the guy he doing it. You guy doing that thing, that thing he does. It's just so when he when oh, he's he starts great because he when he starts he, explaining how they jump over the bridge and they yeah. perfectly, it's okay. He nails. He, he tears nails apart exactly movies. Though. The absurdity of what it was. So all right. So all I mean, I yippee kaye as well. I, you know, I'm not saying but it's but not a good reserved yippee kaye. It's a cartoon, so I'm not. You know, it's I don't, not it's an animated an effing film. cartoon. <laughs> it's an animated. Okay, film. it's an animated cartoon. And listen. Yeah. Again, I had the it's I had feature the cartoon. I had the tall iron giant. The thing was like four foot high with the little guy in his hand. And my my wife at the time t- took it to a thrift store. And got which one? It. My wife what? at the time. I mean, which one though? No, uh, one, two, three. Wait, which matter. number? N- uh, nameless. It has to be nameless. It's fine. Um, all right, guys. So good <laughs> one. That's a good one. That's, that's not a bad first one. Mask. I like the. I think the other ones coming up are going to be a little I think all the films that, that were picked are good. They're all good. They're all yeah. good. And they're hey, John, good. I just want to say, I think the best short we have on our channel is one with you demonstrating the mask. Oh, the yeah. For the, Iron Man <laughs> the, mask. the Iron Man mask? Yeah. I, I know your it, wife I don't think it has the most views. I mean, I think yeah. uh, some of them have more views. But anyway, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Well, who cares yeah, about at our meeting? Stuff. I just want to help the channel. We just want to help the channel. All right. So let's do a round of... John. What did you watch? I'm not even going to say keep it short. It doesn't matter. Uh, Sean, what did you watch? Okay, well, as I was saying, it's hard to get the grandkids to watch um, anything old, even a movie like this. However, they had seen this one. Um, I had introduced my granddaughter, Mara, to Laurel and Hardy because they won't watch any f- old films. And she Those called them. Kids. It's funny. She was calling them gray films, not black and white, which I thought was <laughs> Gray films. Good. That's good. It's like, is it a gray movie? But I tell you, the little guy, you may have seen him. I had, had to get him a Popsicle. Um, yeah, we saw, Sean. I, you Everybody may have noticed him. Yeah. He, There'll I, be a showed, up I put a Laurel too. and Hardy on one on for him. I mean, he was, you know how they say people are rolling out of their seats laughing? That's what he would never, he will never watch anything we're watching. But he's, I had it on and he started watching it. And I mean, he was literally rolling off his chair, watching it, laughing. So that was so good to see. I'm um, because I, I mean they're here with me. They should learn classic cinema, you know. And I'm glad to get them into that. Um, I guess I guess he'll pro- he might be willing to go to Three Stooges. The girls didn't go for the Three Stooges. You know they they would watch Laurel and Hardy too, but they would not go. to yeah, Three, Three Stooges is definitely a guy thing. Yeah, it's a guy. It's thing. definitely a guy thing. You know, he you know Ian has told me he doesn't like Hardy. The fat one, but he likes the thin one. I said, but you think they're both funny? Yes, they're both funny, but I don't like the fat one. Hmm. I kind of took it personally. Yeah, um, it sounds like some Mozambic shaming or something. Yeah, yeah I think <laughs> so. It's tough. <laughs> so uh, that was really enjoyable watching that those films with him to just see someone laughing as with such uninhibitedness. It was it was hilarious just to watch. Awesome. Anything else, or is that it? Well, I'll say the film that really hooked him was um, Hog Wild, I think, a 1931 short. And he also really liked Busy Bodies. And films that got into the slapstick faster. You know, he would get bored during the setup. And, of course, they're 20-minute films. And he hasn't stuff. seen The Three Stooges? No, I'm going to introduce him to him. How old is he? He is um, five. He'll be six oh, on Saturday. Perfect. That's a little young for The Stooges, isn't it? Why? It's, it's uh, He'll be hitting the kids at the party. <laughs> That's what I mean. They'll be poking I mean, them in the eyes. Come on, poking so in the sensitive. eyes and everything. I don't know about that. In the eye. Big deal. Uh, well, yeah, Chris, Chris, that's Ralph. Did you watch anything other than this movie while yeah, you were away? I oh. actually, I actually did. Speaking of watching things with my children, occasionally I watch things which maybe they're not really ready for yet. So we sat Ooh. down and watched Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Oh God, the feature film, and um, my kids absolutely loved it. Um, we had a great time with it. There's a few things that. 
uh, were a little probably not appropriate, but at the same time, you know, what are you going to do, right? It's, uh, but I, I, I absolutely adore that film, and I'm glad that they loved it. And all of a sudden, they went from wanting to, as you may know, children love Halloween, and we're always planning our Halloween costumes months in advance. And all of a sudden, we went from Harry Potter Halloween to Scott Pilgrim Halloween. So my son, he, he looks a lot like Scott Pilgrim. At one point, we made him stand up next to take his glasses off and stand next to the image of Michael Sarah on the screen. And we're like, yeah, buddy, a couple of wristbands and an Astro Boy t-shirt, you're ready to go. He had, the best, was... he had the best Super Bowl commercial, Sarah did. Oh, the Sarah V? Yeah. It's terrific. Yeah. Yeah, he was good. That was terrific, yeah. I enjoyed but that. that was really it. That's all I really watched. All right, you uh... see him in um, This is the End? You know, that sort of like... Oh, yes. Yeah, very funny in that, yeah. 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 Why did I think that was the real him in that movie? Why do I think that was all... I don't think man? so. I think he's, I think he's the exact yeah. opposite of that guy. I know. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um. All right, Drew? Well, I only watched uh, a few things this week. Um, I watched the second season of From which is now it was on epics now it's mgm plus it's like mm-hmm. stephen king meets lost uh silly what, what's it called creepiness it's called from is it a F-R-O-M. stephen king piece no um but i mean it's like it's not good but it's fun and that's enough for me that's fine um kelly said uh she wanted to watch a specific movie so i took out the uh the arrow blu-ray and we watched robocop which oh. i haven't seen in years the original the original and the unrated uh, cut oh, with the yeah. extra uh, better that carnage. Violence. That movie is so good. It's yeah. so good. And it you really forget is. how many people are in it that yeah. uh, you recognize, like all these terrible fathers from TV shows, like Red from um, that '70s show and uh, Laura Palmer's dad and stuff like that. And then what I would recommend that I don't know if people have uh, have heard of, there's an HBO special called uh, Alex Edelman, Just For Us. He's a comedian. I wasn't familiar with his work. It's kind of a stand-up, one-man show thing. I guess it was on Broadway. Um, I'm normally not super excited about one-man shows. But uh, he is an exceptionally Jewish person who ended up invited um, to a meeting of white supremacists in Queens for a conversation. And uh, he went and he had a very interesting experience. Uh, It's very funny, it's very insightful. And um, I wasn't sure the first 10 minutes or so, I was like, I don't know if I'm really feeling it. But then I really got into it because he's really really honest and um, he's, it's weird. Like, I don't think he thought he was gonna get murdered but it, that was very dangerous feeling for him. And he, he went sort of by accident and started to connect with Nazis and then had to process that because he's a chatter, chatter guy and, and a nice guy and everything. So I would recommend Alex Edelman just for us. We also watched Skate Town USA. Oh, I don't know if you guys God. have seen Patrick Swayze's oh, first Kelly movie. Oh, Kelly posted something about yeah, that's that. A, that's a modern funny. classic. I'll let you discover that yourself. It has like Chachi. Who is it? It's Chachi's in it. Oh, it's yeah. like every God Bayo. Bayo and... Has everyone seen, has anyone seen Roadhouse yet? The new one? Yes. yes. Did yes. you like it? Did you guys like it? The first half is okay. And then yeah, it gets it's not, dumb. It's not as and good the fighting movie. is stupid. They do all this weird CGI stuff. Yeah. And Ugh. it's just disappointing. I love the first movie. Too. But I know I what? It's funny because this was, a big, this was a big publicity pushback against this. That The director. Who, who directed these? Doug Lyman. Doug Lyman. Yeah, he and wanted he was it out saying, the movie, This should have been a theatrical yeah. feature. This is... A, this is the great kind of pop. They're really kind of pushing the people. Conor McGregor thing too, and you know I like. But it's him. doing big numbers. I mean, it's yeah, well, uh, it's I mean, getting huge listen, viewership. Gyllenhaal can um, almost do no wrong. That guy is a really really good actor. Yeah. Prince and, of Persia. And I love watching him do his stuff. So, he just, yeah, he can't do wrong. <laughs> what? I, I but he's not. But he's not what's wrong bad. with. No, Prince no, that's Persia, true. So. He's he's good, but the he can do CGI movies that are good. Is the movie seriously in a movie like that? All right, so John, what old film did you watch this week? I didn't actually. Keeping in the superhero animated oh. genre, oh. I watched the second season of Invincible, which oh. uh, is uh, uh, Bob, uh, Robert Kirkwood, who oh. uh, who did The Walking Dead. This was this was a graphic series before the Walking before he did The Walking Dead. Ralph, it's, John's talking about a cartoon on Amazon Prime. Just so it's you know. fantastic the animated show, film. It's no, it's animated a series. series. Animated it's series. fantastic. It's so good. Stephen Yoon plays the lead character. J.K. Simmons is in it. There's a bunch of people in it. Um, but the it's, voices are in it. You mean? It's very uh, graphic. 
Um, You've it's, raved it's, about this one before. You I know, but this, this is the second. I finally watched the second season because uh, it took a few years for the second season to come out. It's also self-aware. They break the fourth wall. They make fun of Marvel a little bit in it. They did that in the. La- they made fun of the multiverse in the last episode. That was really good. But uh, I mean, this is a uh, the violence is like the boys times a hundred but it's a cartoon right uh, yeah but i mean like like uh they had a scene where they're torturing yeah, he, his mother he didn't say it. animated no i heard it i heard it it's not an through. animated film that's why it, well it's an animated series it's not an animated film <laughs> so anyway Ralph, they're very graphic the way they break bones let and stuff go, they Ralph. punch through stomachs if you haven't seen it it's a car- it's, okay. it's not for little kids no. i would not little kids should not watch this show it's definitely teens and above because that's how that it's 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 thanks really that, really violent. Thanks for that Is there warning. a big orgy episode but, like uh, the boys? No, but but I'm telling you, it's 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 really really well done. And I just heard that they are getting a third season, and I'm happy. What did they about call it. that? Does what gasm? What was that one called in the hero 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 gasm? Yeah. yeah, I can't. Maybe wait kids for that. should watch uh, the new episode they just released of um, A Quiet on the Set with uh, follow up to all the Nickelodeon no, horrors. Let's, let's not do that. Oh, is there's a new good, episode but... of it. Yeah, there's a new episode of follow up, and it's. Oh, I really had my fingers crossed that they'd have full yeah. frontal nudity, but they didn't have that in, the, in show. the animated series. Well, yeah, because then I know you'd watch it, Ralph. Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't know this. Can oh I, yeah, other than Fritz the Cat and stuff like that. Even an animated dick is still fun to look at, like, right, Ralph? Listen, a dick yeah. is a dick, man. I don't care. Oh no, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you, you know, are you you know kids are going to be done? watching this episode. They would. Yeah, go ahead, Tic Tac. You're up. All right. Um, I love documentaries. I love so. I watched uh, two on Netflix. I think they're both on Netflix. One called Scoop, which is mm. about uh, them getting the interview with Prince Andrew, uh, the BBC getting, you know, procuring Ooh. that interview and how they figured that all the Someone was procuring for Prince Andrew? Yes. I, I love behind the scenes. Like, I love the newsroom. I like behind the scenes and TV shows and stuff. And this, there's a documentary about it that's actually better than this show that was on Netflix, this movie. The documentary mm-hmm. is amazing what they had to go through to get that interview and the fact that they got it is the amazing part of the story and what he ended up talking about how he didn't sweat and all that it's just to, to have them i just did a live thing today at work just a very very small thing where we were simulating a talk show and it was a live thing i directed i can't imagine those people in that interview i know the feeling they had when they popped the discs out of the camera and they they put it on a motorcycle to get it back to the studio because what they were getting in that interview was just like gold and everybody just didn't want that thing, anything to go wrong. It was crazy. And then I watched this other crazy um, crime one called Love Stalker Killer. You guys should, oh, I've been wondering to see that. You should to... check that one out on Netflix. That sounds fun. It is crazy. Uh, just did, did you watch the finale of Curb Your Enthusiasm? Yes, I did. Oh, I thought you would have brought oh, that. Don't tell me. We're, I'm we're sad. I'm sad. I'm in mourning. I don't want that show to go away. And it's gone. And there's oh, and, does, unless he dies, it, you know, does he die? Uh, I'm not going to say. Uh, JB Smoove did one of those C, uh, uh, Vanity Fair kind of where he broke down when his character mm-hmm. came in. And I hope they do a spin off with him because they're talking about that. His oh, character, he is, he's great. Yeah, he's true. Uh, that, that show, I'm sad to see it go. And they, they, they try to fix the finale from Seinfeld. So there's some. You know, if I wasn't into Seinfeld like John was, is, uh, but you know, I'm Larry David is just a genius. So yeah, that was the last show on Sunday, and it's it's sad to see that one go, but it'll bring me years of joy watching that stuff. I just love I love his uh, his show. So including yeah, the first one, we started did. at the beginning again, and we're getting up to. Um, well, I you should even check out the, the very first one they did, which was an uh, HBO a kind of special, special. called. Yeah. I think it was just called Curb Your Enthusiasm. I think and you know if they do refer to that later, because when they meet, when he goes to HBO or whatever, they says, "Yeah, how's your father-in-law doing?" Yeah, which was yeah. the um, thing. How he tried it's, to get it's out a of fun, it's a fun one too. All right, so um, that's good. In, uh, uh, the Incredibles. We did a little. What you watch now? Let's uh, spin. Oh wait, there's one more thing. Oh. Um, I did not, not watch Gen V. I would say yet because it looks good. I'm but, sorry, you didn't, uh, Chance you, Perdomo, you skipped. You didn't was, watch what? Uh, Wait, back up. You didn't watch what? Uh, Gen V. That's the Heroes spinoff. Uh, Heroes, oh. the boys spinoff. Right. Okay. Um, Chance Perdomo was, I guess, one of the leads, and he uh, killed himself in a, a terrible motorcycle accident. Oh. He was only 27, 
And uh, apparently he's very good as an actor and beloved by people who knew him. And um, I think that that was very sad because he's already gone and I'd never even heard of him. And now yeah, we mentioned that last week, but we didn't, know, yeah. we didn't know who was. Who, the yeah, name, that was very sad. A lot of motorcycle accidents. Treat Williams got killed on one, too, I think. Was it Treat? Treat? A while back? All right. You guys know who Treat Williams is? Yeah, yeah. Of course. yeah he was in City. Deep Rising. Here. Oh, that's right. Oh, deep. Deep oh deep man, his, his, there's his legacy destroyed. Sean, now. did you write anything for Treat before he passed? No, I didn't get it. He was in the Phantom. <laughs> yeah. I loved, I love Deep Rising. I won't have it. Yeah, Deep Rising and uh, Leviathan's a good one too. Oh, Deep Rising is so much better. What's the one with uh, Greg Evigan? What was that one? Remember that Greg was that. Deep Star, Deep, Six? Star Six? Deep Star yeah. Six. Deep Star Six. That's my favorite. And Nina Peebles. And Nina Peebles. That's right. My favorite of those movies is the um, Underwater that had Kristen Stewart. I like that one. I didn't hate that. That's really, that's really good. Yeah. It's a good, scary, intense that. underwater movie. It was fun. Oh, what was that James Cameron Underwater one? That Abyss. Just, the Abyss. The Abyss. The Abyss. Abyss. Oh, that small and it just little film didn't quite pay off at the end, you know. It just well, well the, the very, I, I, I love that movie. director's cut it has a, a an actual movie. ending. So oh, okay, yeah, that that's like just oh, stopped. so we're just going to end yeah. it here. How they even oh, made that? That's movie. that's nice, you know. Yeah, no. If you if you didn't like the ending, but you liked the movie, I would revisit it. It just yeah. released 4K streaming and disc, and it's supposed to be great. And yeah. um, I have the I, I have the years. I have the director's signed pan and scan edition of the Abyss on Laserdisc. Director, they made it. Oh, nice. the last. Oh yeah, I forgot to nice. make the last yeah, episode of Jesus. Curb Your Enthusiasm. Leon, because Jerry's there for the trial that they have to do, so Leon is asking Jerry all these questions about. Seinfeld, because he just started watching it. Larry made him watch it, and he's just he's asking questions. And one of them was, you had a lot of girlfriends and a lot of sex. You must have tapes of all those sex scenes that you did that are never that made that were on the cutting room floor. And Jerry's like, yeah, we got. I think there's 13, you know, hours of that. He goes, Jerry goes, but the only problem is it's on laser disc. Nice. Do you have a laser disc player? And Leon's like, no. What's that? And I'm like, yeah, go, go. So that was pretty funny. Hey, anyway. I got to say one thing that did bring me joy this week is um, my I had a, you know, I, I got like a first generation Blu-ray player and it was just starting to fail. Mostly it just wasn't reading the, the newer discs, you know, and then it started not reading the older ones. And I finally, I was like, I finally broke down because it would work sometimes when I banged on it and everything. I, I was keeping it and I finally bought it. I, you know, and it cost me 70 bucks. I bought a new one and it's like, oh my God, I can look at my Blu-rays again. It's been so fabulous. You need to go to a thrift Muzzle store tough. and pay about 12 bucks for a Blu-ray player. Yeah. You want you want to you want to have pity? Go get an HD DV. You know the HD DV things. Yeah. Uh, like ninety percent of those discs yeah. don't play. You'll get twenty right. minutes into a film and it just stops. Right. You're like, what the hell? All right, enough of this. All right, so let's spin. This will be for the next Indian suggested film we do. But next week right. we're actually doing Indian Cinemaniacs and we're going to do the twelfth fail. Fail. Twelfth oh, fail. Okay. Yep. Before that we're going to spin. Which what network is that on? Uh, I think it was on Netflix. Netflix. It's on Netflix yeah. for sure. Do we have to watch the first uh, 11 fails? Are we going to miss them? Well, no, there's 11 fails in the film. Okay, cool. All right, let me spin. Let's spin for the next uh, yippee Kaye film. All right, so there we got four left on this wheel. I haven't seen two of these films. Perfect. I can't. I can't, I can't. Okay, Train to Busan. That's a good one. That's yeah. the one I want to see. That's, uh, that's the one I haven't seen. Yes, Look it is. Good prediction. There you go. Oh, we'll be bringing that job, John. I got to go to Vegas. Train to Busan. Hey. That's my choice. Nice. I'll tell you one thing. Good choice. I'm going to Vegas. South Korea can do horror movies. Oh, yes. yes. They've done a lot of great monster yes. movies that are trickling over here every now and then. And um, this is a really good Was one. Was this the and, same uh, director as the host? No. No. Okay. And then they did. I, I saw "I'm Alive" is another like um, South Korean. Uh, so it zombie. isn't just Western films we're doing. Let's be clear. It could be anything. No, we said not. Films. We we actually said non-Indian films. Is okay. What we said. So yeah, yeah. So, so this, this is, is okay. I think this is South Korean, right, Sean? And this okay. is a movie we'd yeah. watch on our show anyway. So mm -hmm. it's a train movie. So it yeah. fits that. Is it like the TV show Super it made Train? My train. And anyway, I'll bring that up. Like Super, like Super Train. How about the big bus? What's well, like nice about bus? it is I love like, the big bus. The big bus was hilarious. It's about stuff that you've seen before, but you haven't seen them do it this way. 
and they do it incredibly well. So it's really fun. I mean, you can look at the Incredibles and go, oh, another superhero movie. They do a great job. So this is actually I think Trinity I mean, Busan is great. I mean, so Chris, 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 you have not culture. seen this one. I have not. So oh, I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, me yeah. too. All right. Do you guys know anything about it? I know I it's know about it zombies. It's trains and zombies. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I love zombie films. And it's yeah. snakes on a plane. It's sort of like the best. I could um, never figure out what that movie was going to be about. The best Korean um, thing on Netflix that's zombies is uh, Kingdom, mm. uh, which is uh, two seasons and a movie that's on Netflix. It it deserves a third season. I don't know if they'll ever be able to pull it together, but it's, it's like one of those six or eight episodes a season, and it's uh, right. pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. I, I watched watch it a couple it. times. Yeah, you see, good. the thing is like Walking Dead, Fear the Walking Dead. It's like the first season, the first couple seasons are always good, and then as Debbie says. All they're doing is walking around. Well, and even that last, the, the last one it with, got uh, so repetitive. with uh, Pedro Pascual, what the, the end of us or the last oh, yeah, of the us. Last, the last, the last even that us, yeah. one, it becomes, it's like, okay, we've seen this. Oh, it's not the, it's not the zombies. It's the people. It's the people. The ev- people are evil. So anyway, well, Train to Busan one, will work for you because um, it's a movie. So it doesn't awesome. overstay its, it's welcome. It's over for an sure. hour and a half, yeah. roughly. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's pretty great. fast moving. Qu- to quote our guys, this one's tight. This I haven't tight. seen it in a long I like time. I'm excited to watch it. Zombie movies are tight. <laughs> so, all right. Next week we're doing the twelfth fail, Indian Cinemaniacs. Twelfth mm-hmm. fail. So uh, we gotta watch fail. that film this week, and then next, the one after that we'll do. Training if you guys Busan. like that, I really, like, I hope you guys like it. I really like I'm sure it. Sure we will. I've, did you do a review Claudia on this one? Can I watch a review and not? No, watch I don't want you to because. I'd rather have you see it without any. I, I, you any know, I, I recorded it for the show for next week. I've already pre-recorded it. You pre-recorded. I like, you know, I like to put the I like to put the the movies in now, and it's like two and a half hours. Yeah, it's very long. Very well, long. you know what? Or... You know what? It's funny. I was thinking about this. So, someone said because I told them I watched this movie that was three hours long. How can you watch a movie that's three hours long? People are watching binge watching 10 episodes right. in yeah. one sitting and they're bitching about a three hour movie it's different I, it's that's right james it's cameron different. it's the commitment of sitting in front of that oh but uh, 10 hours uh, is no commitment uh, that's different I, I oh can't yeah explain yeah, yeah. That one i can't and are they right. 10 right. good it's, episodes it's, it makes no. no sense but it's yeah there's filler right. episodes right but so okay well, sorry that's all i'm saying if it drags right, it drags Ralph, have a great week. job. Chris, great job. Back. Great, it was nice Chris, you're going to have to tell us your hangover New Orleans story yeah. at some point. Okay. <laughs> Ralph, get something for the conjunctivitis. There's cream or something. This is get. the new me. I'm telling you, this is. I'm doing drops. this so yeah, I can drops. look around. <laughs> so we we can never see your eyes ever again? Because I'm looking at, you know, because like I told you, I'm doing all kinds of stuff on this Our side. viewers the magic always this, talk about the magic your seems, eyes. It seems seamless. It's not Our seamless. viewers talk there's about your eye color. A lot now you are taking this. that away from there's our viewers. There's a lot of work putting this show together. Hey, put I in the comment section when seamless. you're subscribing, when you're hitting the notification button, when you're hitting the share button. Let me know what you think about the fact that you can't see Ralph's beautiful if blue they, eyes anymore. If they... Listen, whatever they say, it's not going to matter. These are staying on. Look, there's a there's a good I, there's a good test. I recommend viewers go back to the beginning of this episode when John is introducing this movie and just watch Ralph. The <laughs> fact that he you can't see his eyes, nothing is lost from his honest <laughs> emotional reaction. The noises, you know what? the movement. I I I don't. I mean, like I, I don't think Drew, that not Drew, seeing his eyes is, ruins it. Or Drew, he was is, dropping lid, wasn't he? When no, I was no, talking. This is meta. Oh no, no, no. This is meta because I noticed you noticing me. I did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was no. a it was a whole like lots of levels at once. Sean, you like, with us, Sean? We just, we were just talking about you just yeah. now. Yeah. So. All right. Well, yep. We're done. Over. All right. That's it. Show's over. Cut. Cut. See you guys next week. All right, you guys. Great show.